Join us on the show is the former Senate Minority Whip, Senator Ganiyu Olari Waju Solomon, and the Director General Lagos State All Progressives Congress APC Governorship Campaign Council. He'll be speaking on Governor Baba Jide Olushala Sonwulu's re-election bid, why Lagosians should vote for him again, what has he done with his current mandate, uh, and should we vote for him? You can call us on 0812705 091390 You can also tweet to us at TVC. Can I please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. We tell Nigerians that, you know, if anybody wants to speak to Nigerians, come to your view, then you hear <laughs> questions from the Nigerian people. <laughs> and um, the first question every man on the street wants to know is that, why do you think like, Lagosians should we vote Governor Sonwulu for his second term? Thank you very much. Um, if you want to talk about... Um, anybody assuming the position of the uh, governorship of Lagos State, what is right is for them to ask, what has he done? Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, uh, he had uh, four years, close to four years of uh, uh, performance. And uh, the four years we are even talking about, we have to deduct the, the COVID <laughs> and the NSAS. Mm -hmm. And uh, despite all this, I think he made good uh, uh, performance for himself. Um, when I want to judge Governor Sawolu, I always go by the, the team that is set for himself, that is transportation, earth, and so on and so forth. And uh, whichever way you want to take it, he's qualified to be given that position again. Um, the, the most recent one is the, the, the issue of um, the... Um, the, the, what, what do I seaport, say? Seaport, which one? Is that it? Seaport, or which one? The no, 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 not the seaport. I, I was really, really moved by the, uh, the fire brigade something that oh. he did. Oh, yeah, the show. We saw the show. He, he created the, a new fire brigade stations, right. mm. and he repaired all every other one, renovated it, mm. and he brought in 82 machines for them. I, I mean... Given we have um, motor vehicles, we have all manner of things, and they were all commissioned the same day. And before that, he did the commissioning of the the um, the, the fire stations, the fire stations themselves, mm. and uh, we had four, and every other one were renovated. And uh, he also did the. Um, what do we call it? The rail lines? The, no, no, no. That that one is on the on the other side. But for the uh, classrooms, yes, he, he commissioned about one hundred and fifty uh, classrooms, spanning fifteen schools, mm. the same day. And the way it was going at that time, it, it was like um, if we were to do every one one by one. You may not have enough time to do that. Right. So that is why they are summing everything together and doing the commissioning okay. there. And the railway line is really the, the icing on the cake. Because um, if you want to make an impact in Lagos State, you must have um, a mass transport system. Mm. And they've tried all manner of things. BRT is still on. And every other thing, the... the vehicles that he also introduced. But the railway line is really the things mm. that will get Lagos State out. Uh, Let me allow the other ladies to ask a few more questions. Yes, yes Maria. You know, to be honest, anytime I think of Governor Sonula, I think education. I mean, we know all the stories, the classrooms. Then you talk about the rail line, you talk about the bus, um, the, as you mentioned, the fire engines. There are just so many positives, to be honest, and I'm questioning do you think this governor got things, was it easier for him to do these things than the previous, his predecessors? Do you think that those ones had more challenges and for him he's just riding on the back of their previous successes? Well, um, Lagos State has been very, very lucky. Um, every governor that is presented to us uh, performed greatly well. And uh, for him, you know, when you come in, you're going to look at what will be the challenges. What will you do to motivate the people themselves? And that's exactly what he's doing. I don't think he's looking at whatever that uh, this person has done. 
what we have is the template that was presented to the whole electorate, maybe by Ashwa Jubala Metunumbu when he was in. And if you follow those templates, there's no way you will not perform. And that is exactly what he's doing. Plus the fact that he had COVID and had NSAS during his own time. And that is what stands him out. We'll come back to this government. template issue because Nigerians, some of them that, that, that were not around during Ashwaju's time, still don't understand what this template is. We'll come back to that, but let's stay on Ashwaju on, on well, for now. So, um, I wanted to, when I think of, let me follow Mariam's mm -hmm. line, when I think about our current governor in Lagos, I think about continuity, I think about someone who is um, very reserved in terms of, he's not flamboyant and in your face, mm -hmm. but he's very welcoming. I yes, cannot sir. forget that we've had two selfies with the governor and we were trying to struggle to take a picture and just to be fun and say, let me take it for you better. <laughs> and some people have taken it to be that he's, they don't, they're not seeing him as the leader that he is. And they've argued that he's being puppeted by someone, people are controlling him, he's not in charge, he's doing what people are saying. And these are very, these, are, these narratives are very, very prevalent online. So I would like to ask your opinion from your relationship with him and what you've heard that I'm reporting to you now, that people say that he's being controlled. Do you agree with them, and how would you um, address that conversation? Well, I, I don't agree. Um, you, we have uh, different people with their own character, and they bring the character to, to bear in whatever they do. You may be very gentle and humble, so they should not take that as a, maybe he's being uh, asked what to do, and uh, he's being pushed to do this. And uh, I've related with him, um, okay, let's say since when we got this particular position, and I realized that uh, Lagos State, again, is very lucky to have him as the governor of uh, Lagos State, because um, he did things with his mind focused and uh, set on certain things that, that he wants to do. And he also has the what other people will be thinking. Mm. So he's not doing things just the way he wants it. First, what are people with, what will people think about this and how do we present it? And before then, you, you, you take it uh, into the old Lagos State uh, people. Right. Okay, so I personally like the fact that he's a charismatic governor. Mm. Uh, he's, um, he seems to be cool-headed, especially yes, yes, in terms yes. of crisis. He was really tested during the NSAS. Yes. And he always had his school on. He kept That's his school. Right. And, um, you know, it's something that we want to see more when it comes mm -hmm. to leadership. And also the fact that he's been able to harness the public-private partnership in most of his projects. He's able to understand that his yes. government cannot do everything, but you can leverage on partnerships with That's right. uh, private companies private, yes, to bring yes. development to the state. He does yes. a lot of that, and I applaud that. However, this is the era of manifesto where we want to see what more can you offer? We've seen what you've done in four years, but what more can he offer Lagos State if eventually he is voted in? Can you tell us a few of the things? Okay, well, um, once um, he was um, elected, he came up with the, with the team, T-H-E-M-E, -E, yes. and uh, right now what he will be doing is to make it a team plus. Mm. Okay. So whatever that you've seen in team, in transportation, education, health, security, management, and so on and so forth, is going to do much more of that so as to take Lagos to where it is at the south. So it's not limited to doing those things that he has been doing. And we, we have said that in Lagos, we are lucky that we have people that are willing mm. to give us um, those things that we want. So we're still talking about Governor Sonwulu, and if you ask anybody, really, they'll tell you, oh, fantastic governor, he's done this. We can see the infrastructure. We can see the development. But there's one thing that many Lagosians are still holding against our governor, which I hope you'll be able to help clarify. Our governor's involvement in the NSAS matter. And unfortunately, they, the whole time, there was this negative energy of, oh, he did this, he did, he sent soldiers, he can he did, you know, and... That people, a lot of Nigerians still hold that bad blood so against our governor. Even when we see the great work he's doing, that comma is something that I think the governor must address and he must be able to speak to Lagosians directly on exactly his involvement because people still blame him for things many, many know well that he's not involved in. 
But I'd like you to say, address that uh, very for us at this point. You see, when um, you said uh, they know that he's not involved, yeah. but they still put it on him. Yeah. So whichever way, whatever he says, will not still be taken as the honest <laughs> truth. Mm. We all were aware when the NSAS uh, situation happened. First, we know that he's not in control of the, the police or the military or any of the armed forces because they, they will have to talk to their commander-in-chief or whoever that is in charge before they do anything. And um, the NSAS situation, whichever way you want to look at it, it was unfortunate. It couldn't have, it couldn't have happened at all. And uh, it tried its best to make sure that uh, it did not escalate. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, as we also, I, I, I'm a victim myself mm. because our, our place was born. What happened to that? And a lot of buses were born. So there were some people that got into that answer situation in order to do what they wanted to do. Mm. That, I believe, is the situation. And for uh, Governor Sonwolu, he has said several times of the role of the governor of the government in need, that they were they are not really um, involved. And uh, if you look at the, um, the panel that was set up, a lot of people came and uh, he tried his best to make sure that uh, he, d he solved uh, most of the problems mm -hmm. they, they, they raised. I believe those people that were saying that, no matter what happened, they will continue to say right. it. Yeah. Okay. okay, so um, as much, you know, we have looked at the positives, but the truth is that there are some things that are quite worrisome. Uh, many Lagosians will tell you that visiting a government health care facility, it's not, it doesn't always, you know, there are just too many issues when it comes to that. And... Um, Yes, I can see roads, I can see all the other things that we've mentioned, the railway working, but when we come to hospitals, how people are treated in hospitals, um, the facilities within the hospitals, um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering in the themes that he has laid out um, to do, the hospital part, the healthcare part, what is his plan going forward? We know that four years is almost done, and I'm not saying that he hasn't done anything so far, but we need what we need that if he comes back, what will he do in such a way that it will impact positively for Lagosians when they visit, you know, state um, healthcare facilities? Okay, thank you. Um, recently, uh, the governor made announcement that um, most of the hospitals, maybe healthcare centers and so on, there are some that are earmarked for development into general hospitals mm. and uh, that will be the plus in it okay. because Lagos the way it is keeps on developing keeps on bringing in more and more people there are a lot of people coming into Lagos and they remain in Lagos they don't plan to go back, back. and uh, the governor I mean he, what he, he tend to do is to make sure that as is developing most of the um, centers into private, uh, into general hospital, and it will still continue to do that. Mm -hmm. Those um, hospitals that you said uh, uh, lacked um, certain uh, infrastructures, by the, by the time he comes on board, I believe some of them will be given much more um, infrastructure right. than, than they, they, they need. The, the, the fact that the people go there and they are maltreated, will not be the duty of the governor himself. But if it is reported yeah. that this is what we encountered on our way to the hospital, I believe a lot of things right. will be done. And um, yeah. he, he's ask. doing his best. I'll, I'll, just, okay. I, I have, I'll just really comment on this issue because um, we've been blessed with, in Lagos State to have um, consecutive good governors that have done, tried you know, to make things work. And under a particular administration, we had... Um, unplanned visit to hospitals, to ministries, and they kept everybody on their toes. And I feel that it would be a good move to emulate the good things that have been done in the past by the current go the governors emulating it would help to keep 
everyone in those hospitals because it, the situation in our health healthcare system is really bad. And it's not essentially that we can blame the governor, but we will still blame it because he's the head. <laughs> and the complacency in the way it is being run because they know nothing is going to happen. But under the previous two administrations ago, they couldn't try the same thing they are trying now. They know that the governor then could just show up in the hospital without any prior information. And when he makes things bad, it is really bad for the people in charge. The CMDs will get their heads rolling. You are a member of a very strong committee, a committee that, if we are true to ourselves, is, can be seen as part of the problem with other, other parties that use it to campaign against the governor, um, the GAC, the GAC, GAC the mm -hmm. Governor's Advisory Council, mm -hmm. and they are seen as these are the people bonge, bonge. that make and shake and break and control and do all of that. Would you say that the Governor's Ad Advisory Council are being demonized? Or what exactly do they represent? Are they truly in support of the people or they are in support of their pockets? Because that's what we're seeing. These are things, we, they are online, sir. If you just Google, if you just Google people's opinion, you will, what you will see will shock you. No, 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 no. you know? So what's the function a, of the GAC? Yes, and why are they so powerful? <laughs> Listen, the function of the GAC is strictly advisory, and that's the name, uh, Governor's Advisory Council. And uh, it, it, do, it, it doesn't go beyond um, the advisory thing. Right. As you've told me that uh, some people go to the hospital and this is what they encounter. What I can do is to tell them that, mm. okay, yes, Mr. Governor, we understand that some hospitals are not performing well at mm. par with your own performance. So make sure that things are done that way. So those are the duties of the uh, GAC. But for people to say that uh, they are there for themselves, well, that is the duty. They uh, said GAC is there for budget. Like, if anybody you want, the GAC annoyed would get. Like they, are, they have the backing, like they are the power, the kingmakers, the cabal. <laughs> I didn't want to use that word, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really don't know. Uh, uh, the way I see the GAC is an um, advisory. I've attended their meetings and I see the things they do. Some of those things that uh, you might not even talk about here, they, once they hear it, they bring it mm -hmm. to the table and it is trashed on the mm -hmm. table. Let me, let me, let me, let me come, good. I have to go on a break because let me stay on that because it's important that these kind of issues are continually raised because yeah. people come with their own perspective and it becomes factual in mm. their own minds. But you see, a GAC can be very positive. Any government council across any state, any country can be, because I'm sure we have GAs across the world. Different people have different yeah. um, retirees who are now like, they're like Expert. the pillars yeah. of any party. So I think it's important that the GAC finds a way to let people know what they stand for, who they are. So people don't just come up with all this formulating in their mind and just come up ah, on social media and then you know, everybody's thinking it's factual. We still have our guest with us, Honorable Sono, Solomon is still our guest. Yes, please had a question for the break. Go ahead. Yes, um, Honorable, I'm glad that um, we've been asking issue-based questions and you have tried to, you know, help um, give us an insight to some of the questions we've raised. However, Nigerians are emotional people and mm -hmm. they are going to be voting with their emotions and the emotions in the air right now is tilting to the fact that the average Nigerian is tired of the two major political parties, the APC and the PDP. Do you think that would affect um, how they now decide to vote for um, Governor Songolu? Do you think they will pay attention? What, what is your plan to ensure that they pay attention to what is being done for the state as against we just, we're just tired of the APC or the PDP? Well. Um, the APC, um, out of the two, is the newest and uh, is also um, the, the latest. And I believe it has done so very well that um, people will uh, vote for them. I, what we tell people is to make it an issue-based election. Mm -hmm. So you don't go, I, everybody has emotion. So, if, because if you have emotion, you may be tied to a particular party. And regardless of what anybody says, you're going to vote for that particular party. Mm -hmm. But once you make it an issue-based, and I believe that once it's an issue-based, uh, Governor Sawolu has several things that he has done and that he also promises to do, that uh, the people will have no other choice than right. to vote for him. We had the governorship candidate of the LP here last week, uh, <laughs> Well, I was viable, and he was one of the 
pin points you kept saying was that the problem they have, that the negotiations have with Lagos State is the fact that they tell you, they don't tell you, they, they don't tell you the real figure of how much Lagos is earning, about one, and they tell you, they, uh, they, they sell you, they, they spent 100 billion to do one bridge when the actual value is 20 billion, for example, just even an example. Um, these are some of the things that your, um, your, your challengers will continue to put out there. Can you, is there a way you can address it? Is there, is there any truth in the fact that Lagos State is not truly disclosing how much it's really earning? Some, some say Lagos State is broke. Others are saying Lagos State has much more money that they are disclosing. Let us tell us which is, which is, which is right. Secondly, do we, do, do the value of projects, is it the true value that we get? Or there's something else that is playing behind that we don't know about? Well, uh, whatever the governor or whoever is in charge says is the value of the money. He, has, he hasn't gotten anything to come on here and uh, tell lies. So if it says this is how much we've had, we take it, uh, that is how much they've had. And a, a lot has gone into this handing issue. They started from 600 and so on. When it was 30, they said it was 30. When it was 40, and when it goes down, they tell you it goes down. So I don't see any anky panky in that regard. And when they also spend money on anything, it's, it's accompanied with the amount. Whenever they are doing the commissioning, that we are doing the commissioning of this particular road, it costs us so much for us to do. And if they've not finished, they will tell you that the deadline is this uh, particular month. And uh, by God's grace, they will finish it by that particular month with the amount of money they are going to spend. So um, the Goshans, um feel like the governor, in the past one year, seemed to be in a hurry to fix so many roads that we are groaning <laughs> under traffic. Like the traffic does not have part two. Everywhere you go, there's road under repair, and we are being forced into another lane. There is a lot of work going on, and I see that it's, I, I would say it is a good thing, but it seems to be happening at the same time where there are no alternative roads. Um, I'm sure that you are not exempted from the traffic we're facing. What would you say to Lagosians who feel like the governor is not feeling our pain? Maybe because the governor has escorts, so he does not face the traffic the way we are facing it. Well, um... Before now, um, there has been the consideration of let's do this road. Maybe by next year we we'll do another road. Right. But um, what he has done is to map out the roads that are that have um, priority. Yes, that have priorities and that leads to several other roads. Mm. And uh, what is that needs to be done and is doing is to make sure that these roads are tied. And uh, by the time he waits for these particular roads to be tied, I mean, if he has to wait, and uh, a lot of things will, will go awry. And uh, by, by the way he's doing it, maybe I will have to tell Lagosians to please take, have a lot of patience. Because at the end of the day, um, there's a one proverb they say in, uh, Yoruba, can I say it now? Please, go ahead. What they're saying is, before you fried a dog, for those people that eat dog, it's uh, sweet, but before it becomes uh, eatable, it's going to take a long time. So that is exactly what he's doing. That instead of doing it maybe piecemeal, and um, he considered the roads important enough for them to go into it and do everything that is necessary to be done. St still on the road issue, there are, there are some projects that has experienced major delays. Um, even like I feel, maybe you'll be able to answer because of um, the information that you probably have that we don't have. We have the road, um, we've had Blue Line will be ready and we're waiting. Um, end of the year, they and, told us already. But it was supposed to be ready like a few months ago. Mm. We have the, there's a connecting road they are doing, Freedom Way all the way to mm. Link VGC Road. It was supposed to be finished like a year ago. Until now, we're still waiting. There are many projects that mm. had a timeline when they started the project. You know, we celebrate the project before we start mm. in Nigeria. We don't celebrate when it is done. And we all were happy that, oh, they're going to do this new road. And two years after, we're waiting for the road to be delivered, and project is so slow. And we're hearing issues of fund not being released. So Mario asked a question. 
Is it that Lagos has money or Lagos State does not have money? Because we, Lagos generates the highest IGL in Nigeria, and yet we are unable to find, finance our projects according to the timeline that we set for the project to be done. You see, most of these um, timelines will not take into consideration certain things that happen, like um, rain falling, for instance. Mm, no. yeah, they have to stop because they, you can't do anything when it is raining. So those are the things that is not about money or about any other thing, but they are natural. Even the flood. Yes. So when the flood too that comes in, you cannot do road. Yeah. There is a road that I, I used to pass, and um, it's unfortunate that whenever they've done a big part of the road, it's going to rain. Yeah. And when it rains, maybe the second day, when it rains, you, it becomes unmotorable, not as well as uh, mm. you expected it to be. So they have to come back there to do it. So it's not about let me, money. Let me it's pause you because the time is going on. I really want to get more questions. And I have a call from Larry. He's been holding for a while. Good morning, Larry. Are you there? Sorry for keeping so you. Fact, I just want to speak to the, your case. Yes. Go ahead. You're live. Hello? Yeah. My question to the um, to your guest is um, I saw it online that the APC they did their rally um, is it yesterday or some days ago yeah. and many road was closed in Lagos State. Um, I want to ask him that if other party come to Lagos State to do rally, are they allowed take permission to close all roads, some roads as well? Are they going to allow that in Lagos State? Okay. That's number one. And then, sorry, um, there's something I want to say about Oslo State before I go. Um, the trouble that um, um, the new governor we, we, we get into is about the all this new king that the um, Oyitola did before he left. There's a mess in that king making. Okay? The new governor we need to sort that out there. Okay, so that question is, he's, he, he's not here for the Ocean State. Okay, so obviously what he's asking, and let me just bring that into a bigger question, is the fact that are other parties, when they do want to do their rallies in Lagos State, would they be given the same uh, privileges that APC seems to have had? Because according to him, quite a few roads were closed for that campaign on Saturday. Okay. Could you confirm that? Well, l let me go for, to the issue of roads closed. The roads are not closed. It's people that were coming that causes some delay in some parts of it. What they've done is to make sure that uh, the roads are free in some parts. And they tell you which road you can take yeah. to get to wherever so you, are, yes, you are going, so that there won't be any reason for you to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, but the crowd was so enormous that um, people find it very difficult to um, Unless you maneuver, the, the roads were quite closed because of um, the, the magnitude of uh, people yeah. that were there, not intentionally. But if anybody wants to do their own rally, they are free. Lagos is free. Yeah. I mean, Lagos has been, has been the home to everybody. So you can come and have your... So if you have rally. that kind of crowd, you still get... If you don't have the kind of crowd, maybe there wouldn't be need to close the, close, exactly. close the roads. But if you yeah. have that kind of crowd, certainly... Yeah. The, gov the, the government will allow you. So time is fast spent. We've been speaking with um, Honorable Ganil Solomon, who is the DG of the Somewhere Look campaign. Um, and um, you've told us a lot of things that the governor likes to do, or plans hope to do in the second term if he's given the opportunity. I'd like, I'd like, to, like to have the final words on um, why Nigerians, why Lagosians especially, should vote the APC, considering what we've all said so far, on why well, people feel in all the issues they have, and why can they, should they trust Governor Son will look to do better in the coming elections. Thank you. Most of the issues they raise on the uh, social media are a figment of their imagination. Mm. Most are not true. <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you that uh, uh, with Son Wolu, you have a, a perfect gentleman for the job. And he has done it for three and a half years, going to four years. And I believe that uh, he will do much more given the opportunity to serve for another four years.
So we so we would like you to extend our invitation to the governor. We've been trying to get him for three and a half years to come on the show. Hopefully, he's so busy. Uh, I'm sure I, I yes, see him quite busy. busy. So it's been nice because I we, we try to tell tell our guests that Nigerians listen to your view. And it's important that because there have, there's so many questions on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway area, yeah. Nima's area. There's so many issues with questions, questions we have. Lake Expressway. So yeah. security yeah. issue. We've not asked you. There's so many other issues we'd like to raise. So please let your candidate know that we'd definitely like to speak to him at some point. All right, thank you.